Right. So we're going to do uh, uh, the June 2019 regions, uh, starting with number one, uh, going all the way straight through. All right. So first one, there is a sociologist recording. A lot of you probably are like, this, this is not math, but it's okay. Um, just recording, randomly selecting surveillance videos uh, and recording the amount of time people spent on a smartphone, right? So they are not asking anybody any questions, so there's no survey. Uh, we're not counting any people, so this is not a census. We're not dividing the people into two groups, like the experimental group and the controlled group. Um, so therefore, it is not an experiment. It is an observational study because we are just observing and recording. That's it. All right. Question number two, which statements are true for all? Keyword here is oral real numbers. Uh, so we're going to take the first one, take a look. And we've done this before in class, so let's just go ahead and do this kind of quick. So x minus y squared means that we're going to do, um, we're going to multiply it twice. Um, and so we're going to go ahead and distribute this. So that's x squared. This is minus xy minus another xy. Uh, and this is plus y squared. So when we combine this, it's going to be x squared minus 2xy plus y squared, which is not what this says. So anything that has a 1 in it, we can go ahead and cross that out. Uh, now let's see if the second one is correct. To the third power means that we're going to do the same thing, x plus y, x plus y. We're going to multiply by itself three times. Um, we've done this enough that you know that this is not going to be the same, but let me just go ahead and do this for us. So you're going to do this two at a time. So foil that, x squared plus xy plus another xy plus y squared. So that's going to give you x squared plus 2xy y plus y squared. And then we're going to, forgive my handwriting, we're going to multiply that by the last x plus y. So x plus y. Uh, we can already look at it and see this is not going to be the same, but let's just go ahead and do it. So x squared times x is going to be x to the third. x squared times y, it's going to be x squared y. We're going to multiply this right here. It's going to be 2x squared y. Uh, and then the final one that we're going to do is this one right here. So that's going to be plus 2 x y squared then we're going to take y squared times x that's another x y squared plus and the last one is y to the third power and again this does not equal what's there but let's just go ahead and finish this off x cubed plus 3 x squared y plus 3 x y squared plus y to the third so neither one nor two are equal all right, uh, moving on, which is a solution set. So all I did for this one is I went ahead and graphed it. So solution set just means that we are going to see where they're equal. So I went to Y1, I plugged in the first one, 3X plus 6, went to Y2, plugged in this exactly as is, uh, and then I went to my graph. And I was able to see that, hey, uh, 0, 6 is definitely a solution. I can go to the table to confirm that, so 0, 6, right? y1 and y2 are the same so that means that one and two are out this is a strategy that you should all be using so it's between three and four um, and then if i go 5 21 one of them is 21 but the other one is not so that one is not it and if i go to confirm negative 5 negative 9 see the y1 and the y2 are the same so that means that this is the correct answer okay you could also do it algebraically ask me if you want to learn how to do that all right uh, so Irma, this Irma question, um, she began, uh, she's trying to reduce her one mile time. She recorded her one mile time once a week for 12 weeks. So it's asking you which one is correct. Okay. So the way that I did this is I took a look. This is week zero. She took, this is five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. She took 10 minutes, uh, in the, in zero weeks to do the one mile. Um, so then let's see another good point right here, right? So I see at two weeks, she decreased that time. She now went to six, seven, eight. She did one mile in eight minutes, right? And then you could see that she's still like, she's decreasing the amount of, um, time it takes her to do the one mile, 
So that means that her one mile speed increased as the number of weeks increased. So the correct answer for this is the first one. How? So she ran the one mile quicker uh, is basically what I'm saying. All right. Number the next one. Let me just make sure that this is correct. Good. Number five. All right. So a seven year lease for office space states that the annual rent is 85,000, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and we're trying to figure out. What's the total rent expense for the entire seven-year lease? Okay, so it's total set uh, thingy thing. Um, let me just pull up the reference sheet. All right, so here's our reference sheet, and so we can see that in looking at this question, um, her annual rent is eighty-five thousand, and it's increasing six percent each additional year. And we're looking for the keyword here is total rent. Okay, so we're looking to see if we take all of those and we add them up. So if I look at my reference sheet right here, we're looking for a geometric series, okay, as opposed to a sequence, because this is telling us the total. We're taking all of these and we're adding them up. So I'm just going to go back over here and write down my formula. So it's A1 minus A1 times R to the uh, N power, just make sure, to the N power all over. 1 minus the r, which is our rate. All right, so now all we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and plug numbers in. So she's the annual rent is 85,000. So I'm going to put 85,000 for my A1. Here's my A1. Here's my r, which is 0.06. Uh, and it's increasing. So we're going to add a dollar to the six cents. So that's going to go to a dollar a dollar six. Um, and then it's going to be for the entire seven year lease. So this is going to be our N. Okay. So 85,000 minus, so I'm going to put the minus sign. We're going to put the A1 again. So that's 85,000 again. Um, our R is 0 0.06 plus a dollar because it's increasing by that amount. So that's 1.06. And we're going to raise this to the seventh power because that's our N, how much time it's going to take divided by 1 minus our rate, which is 1.06. So I'm going to take all of this, plug into my calculator, and I'm going to get about, and you can do this, you should do this yourself, you're going to get $713,476.20, which is choice number four, okay? But again, like I said, actually plug it into the calculator yourself, all right? Number six, so it says the graph of y equals f of x is shown below, which one defines? So this is just a matter of taking these and plugging into the calculator. So I'm going to pause while I do that. All right, and just like that, we're back. Uh, so I plugged it in. That's why the music is different now. Uh, so I put the first one in under y1, second one under y2, so on and so forth. And then now I'm going to go to the table. So I'm looking for these numbers. They conveniently plotted it for me. So 210, 420, 640. So 2, I go across from here. Boom, 210. And then 420. So if I go down just to kind of like verify. I already know that the answer choice is going to be 3. But I want to just uh, show myself that I'm correct. So I want to go to 4 and see if 20 is there. And boom, it is, right? So 420. Uh, and then if I go to 6, it's 40. So finally, the answer is going to be the third one because that's the one that matches, okay? Uh, the next one. So given blah, 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 which of these is true? So just to remind you that um, it's a factor. So something is a factor if it crosses the, the x-axis, okay? Uh, which means that it has a remainder of 0. Um, so how we do this is we take each of these that are right here and we're going to flip the sign. So this one here, this is going to be x equals 1. This one here is going to be x equals negative 1. Uh, I think you get the point. This is negative 1 right here. We're going to plug negative 1 in and the final one we're going to plug in x equals 1. We're going to just switch these signs right here. Okay. Um, and we're going to see if it's a factor or not. Um, so the easiest way to do this is to take the right the opposite of negative one is positive one so we're going to take that and plug it in here so one to the third power minus three times one to the second power minus two times one 
uh, plus 4 and see what that equals and that's going to give me 0. So if it's 0 then that means that it is a factor because if something is a factor it has no remainder. Uh, so therefore it looks like uh, when I plug in x equals 1 I'm going to get a factor so that means that the answer choice has to be 4 because x minus 1 is a factor because p of 1, like if I plug 1 in, which I just did, I get 0. That's exactly what this says. I don't get 2, um, so therefore the correct answer is answer choice number 4. Okay. Uh, which equation is false? This also is something that I can plug into the calculator, so I'm just going to show you how to do that real quick. All right, so the first thing that I did is I stored 2.1 in for x. So all you do to do that is you hit 2.1. Why did I pick 2.1? I just wanted to do something random. Um, I didn't want to use like 2. Uh, and then you hit store and you put it in for x. And that's how you get 2.1. And then I plugged in the first one, right, which is x to the 3 over 2 to the second power. So I plugged that in. Uh, and then I want to plug in the fourth root of x to the third. So to get fourth root, I'm going to hit math. Uh, option number five is going to allow me to put the four there. And then you put x to the third power, to the third power, hit enter. And look, it gives me something different. That's asking you which one is false. So that means that this right here is false. You could have also done it algebraically. When you raise something to the second power, that means that you're multiplying it by two. So this is the same thing as 3 over 2 times 2 over 1, uh, which we solve this is going to be x to the 6 over 2, which is the same thing as x to the 3rd. And x to the 3rd is not the same thing as this, which is the 4th root of x to the 3rd. They're not the same. So this is the one that is false. Everything else is true. Check, check, and check. Okay. All right, so what is the inverse? Inverse means that you're going to take all my y's and make them into x's and take any x's and make them into y's plus 5. And then you're going to check to see if this answer is there as is. x equals 4, y plus 5. That is not there. So we got to get the y by itself. So we subtract 5 from both sides. This cancels out. x minus 5 is equal to 4y. Divide both sides by 4. Um, so divide everything by 4. And then I have y equals x over 4 minus 5 over 4. Uh, and boo -doo. this is the correct answer because it's the one that matches with that. Okay. Uh, if there's any questions, again, remind, just ask. Okay. Uh, which situation could be modeled using a geometric sequence? So just to remember what a geometric sequence is, is like when you have a set of numbers and you multiply to get to the next number. That's a geometric sequence. So looking at it, uh, cell phone company charges $3 per month and $12.50 for each additional. That's and $12.50 for each additional. So we're adding there. So that is not going to be multiplied by the next. The next one, the temperature in your car is 79. You lower your the temperature of your air conditioning by two degrees every three minutes in order to find a comfortable temperature. So we are lowering it, which means that we are subtracting uh, by two degrees every three minutes. Um, the next one, so that those two are not geometric sequence. David's parents have a set limit of 50 minutes per week that he may play online games during the school year. However, they will increase his time by 5%. Okay, 5% per week boom this is the one that is going to be it's going to be increasing his time by five percent each week so that means that we are multiplying each by 1.05 so this is exactly what a geometric sequence is we're multiplying to get to the next number uh so finally sarah has a hundred dollars saves an additional fifteen dollars again that's adding you're just adding fifteen dollars each week okay the next one so the completely factored form of this is blah 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 so in looking at these answer choices, I want to work smart, not hard. Automatically, I can tell this is not factored as much as possible. So this is wrong. Okay. Uh, you could just factor that and be like, okay, this is n plus 3 and n minus 3. And then everything else is going to match n plus 6, n minus 2. So this is the correct answer. 
um, if you want me to go through it, I can real quick. So we're going to take this and we're going to split this up. We can see that we have uh, this, this, I can make it into like, you know, a split it into like six equations. So for the first one, I can factor out an n squared and I'm left with n minus nine um, n squared n squared minus 9, my bad, n squared, because I have to get n to the fourth, and then I can take out over here, I could take out, I know I have to have in here, I'm going to also have an n squared minus 9 in there, so what is it that I need to take out, a 4n, um, and over here for the final one, I'm also going to have to have an n squared minus 9, just so it stays consistent between all of them, uh, so what I'm going to take out is a negative 12, and then the n squared minus 9, all of those are the same, so I'm going to go ahead and factor that out. And then I'm going to write down what I'm left with. So if the n squared minus 9 goes away here, I'm left with the n squared, so I'm going to put that down. If the n squared minus 9 here goes away, I'm going to be left with a plus 4n. Um, and then if the n squared minus 9 goes away here, I am left with a minus 12. Okay. So now I'm going to just go ahead and factor this out further. So this is n plus 3, n minus 3, like we said from the beginning. This can factor, we're looking for two numbers that add to be 4 and multiply to be negative 12. So that's pretty easy, right? Do, 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 do. What would it be? Okay, so plus 6 and minus 2, right? Plus 6, minus 2. 6 minus 2 is 4. 6 times negative 2 is negative 12. And that is exactly what choice two says. Okay. Number 12. What's the solution? Blah, blah, blah. So now we're going to go ahead and do something similar. I see that there's a W here and there's a W here. So I can do what I just did above and factor it out. And I'm left with X squared plus one equals zero. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Um, so then I can, it says to solve for X. So and w is a positive number, so I can divide both sides by w, so this cancels out because I'm not risking dividing by 0. So I have x squared plus 1 equals 0, uh, and then I'm going to move the 1 to the other side, so I have x squared is equal to negative 1. Do the square root for both, and I get x is equal to plus or minus um, i, because the square root of negative 1 is i, uh, and that is option number 4. Okay. Alrighty, we're cooking with gas. Let's move on. So we have a situation here that kind of brings into question what we just did on uh, statistics. So keywords here are middle 95%, middle 95%. So reminder of how to find this is you take Whenever you see middle 95%, mean, plus or minus, two times the standard deviation should come into play. Do they give us that? So the mean is boom. Here's our mean. Standard deviation right here is the O with the little baseball cap. Okay. So then you're just going to plug this into a calculator. So we have mean, which is 0.254. Uh, let's do minus two times. And then our standard deviation is 0.0. 060 uh, and when I hit enter in my calculator I'm going to get 0.134 and then if I do the same thing to the other side instead of doing the minus sign if I do the plus sign like this I'm going to do mean which is 0 0.254 plus 2 times the standard deviation which is 0 0.060 I'm going to get the higher range um, so I already know actually that the answer is choice 2 uh, and then when I do the higher range, I'm going to get 0.374 as my higher range, and that is option choice number two. All right, so it says a solution to the equation equals, so f of x is equal to g of x. So what we're looking for is to see where are, like, numbers that, here's f of x, right, and here's g of x, and we're looking to see where you have points that are the same. So negative 3.12 is not here. 0, negative 6. Nope, that's not what I have here. So that is not going to be correct. Uh, 1.23 is not here. 
okay, and 8.52. Look, they're the same. So it says a solution. Solution is we are looking for the X's. Clearly tells us, right? We don't care what the Y's are. We're just looking for the X's. So the X's are the same when right here at 8.52. So the correct answer is 4, okay? Uh, number 15, the expression blah, blah, blah is equivalent to Anytime it says is equivalent to, you could just take this, plug it into the calculator. I'm just going to show you how to do that real quick. So I still have my x being 2.1, so I'm going to leave it like that. So I can go 6 minus, and I can plug in this whole thing. So 3x minus 2i is going to be second decimal point, and then I'm going to square that. Hit enter. So that's what I'm looking for, something that looks like this equivalent to okay so i'm going to plug each of them in uh so i do negative 9 x squared plus plus 12 x 12 come on x i second decimal again uh plus 10 and again my target that i'm looking for is at negative 29 boom I did it on the first shot, okay? Is equivalent to, boom, this is equivalent. I could stop right there, okay? You can plug the rest of them in and see that that is not the same. So the next one, you have a number, so I'm gonna call this x minus 20 times its reciprocal. Reciprocal means that I'm gonna take the number and I'm gonna flip it, so one over x, and it says equals eight. So I just took English and I put it into math. So I have x, Why can't I write my x's today? Whatever. So x minus 20 times 1 over x equals 8. Okay. So to get rid of this right here, so I have x minus 20 times 1 is 20 over 1 times x is x equals 8. I'm trying to see where this is equal. I don't like fractions, so I'm just going to multiply everything by x. Multiply this by x. Multiply this by x. That way all the... Um, the x's will cancel each other out. So this whole denominator right here goes away. x times x is x to the second power minus 20 times x is 20x. And I have to see where that's equal to. Oh, I just messed up. Sorry, let me just go back real quick. These x's cancel each other out. So, and so do these right here. So this is minus 20 equal All right, I just went really quick. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to go quick, but I shouldn't be sloppy. So this is, I'm gonna multiply this by x, and if there's no denominator, there's a one right there. And same thing right here. If there's no denominator, there's an imaginary one. Um, and so I'm gonna multiply everything by x here. So I have x squared minus 20 equals eight x, okay? Um, if that confused you right there just ask me and we'll go through that in class all right so we have x squared we're going to bring everything to one side so minus 8x minus 8x so this cancels out so i have x squared minus 8x minus 20 is equal to zero and then i have to solve so i'm looking for again am method so looking for two numbers that add to be negative 8 and multiply to be negative 20 uh 10 and 2 that should work so x minus 10 and x plus 2 uh to set them equal to zero i just switch the sign so i get x is equal to 10 and x is equal to negative 2 um and that is exactly what choice number one says okay all right we're doing pretty good next one uh that was 16 here's 17. All right, we're back. So I just um, went ahead and plugged in the actual equation. So it's like this. Um, I did want to pause and show you that you can hit second and graph and you can see what the numbers look like. Uh, so this is the original. For n, I just went ahead and put in two just to kind of see and compare. So it says the value of n increases or decreases. Um, so you could start it at two and then move up to three, four, five, so on and so forth, and then kind of like compare. 
So it says for option number one, as the value of N increases, the amount of interest per year decreases. So if I look at my actual thing, um, here's the original function, and that's not true, all right? As N increases, the, the amount uh, still increases. So the first one is not correct. It says as the value of N increases, the account approaches this next function. So when I, I went ahead and graphed that second function, um, and then I can go over here and I can keep changing the value of, of N. Let me go like this. Do, 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 do. So it says as N increases, right? So I could change this number to something dramatic. I'm going to keep going over until it gets to the 2, um, and I could change it to like 25. And if I change that to 25, I have to change the exponent because there's n here and it's also there. So I need to go ahead and insert a 5 here for 25x. And then if I go to my table, uh, you can see that these numbers start getting very, very close together. Okay. Uh, so the second one is actually correct. Um, I do want to show you one more thing about the window. So right now, if I hit graph, I won't be able to see anything because, as you can tell, the numbers are big, right? They're 50. So I want to go ahead and change my, here's my X. I don't care really about my X. I care more so about my Y because it's 50, right? It's up here somewhere. So I'm going to go ahead and hit window. I'm going to go ahead and hit window. Come on, calculator. Work with me. All right, and I'm going to change my y max. I'm going to go down to y max, and since it's at 50, I'll just go ahead and be dramatic and just put 100, and then when I hit graph, now I should be able to actually see it. Um, and then you can see the, the first graph, which you can see it's steadily increasing. Uh, it's going up, and then the second graph should be pretty much right over it. Yep. Um, there you go. Good. So I can tell that the second answer is correct uh, just by looking at it and then uh, playing around with the values of n. And then you can decrease n to 1 and you'll see that the amount of, in uh, uh, of interest does not increase, it actually decreases. And the fourth one is also false. Body, body, body. Okay. Uh, number 18. So 400 students in the senior class took the SAT. Awesome. Distribution. Okay. We just did this. So distribution looks kind of like this, looks like a bell curve, um, and then is approx it's approximately normal. The number of students who scored within two standard deviations of the mean is approximately. So remember that one standard deviation of the mean is 68%. Uh, two standard deviations of the mean, let me just go ahead and change that color to green, which is what we want. Two standard deviations of the mean is 95%. So we have to do... 95%, which is 0.95 uh, of, which means the, we're going to multiply it, All right? We're going to multiply, so times uh, the total number of students is 400, so we're going to multiply 400 times it, and we're going to get to a number that is about 380, uh, which is 380, is right there, okay? Uh, number 19, the solution set for the equation. We actually did this exact question uh, to get rid of the square root. You have to square both sides, square both sides. So you get b squared is equal to 2b squared minus 64. Uh, we're going to move everything over to one side. So we're going to do minus 2b squared minus 2b squared on both sides. This is going to cancel out and we're left with negative 64 on the right negative 1b squared on the left hand side divide both sides by negative 1 this cancels out i'm left with b squared is equal to 64 and b is equal to the square root of 64 which is positive and negative 8 and then we want to see which one actually is correct uh, so we could go ahead and take it and plug it back in to the original and i want to remind you that you cannot have um, a negative under the radical, it would be imaginary, but let's just go ahead and uh, follow through with the question. So if I take positive 8 and I plug it in, 8 is equal to 2 times 8 squared minus 64. You'll see that this actually does work, because 64 times 2 is 128. Uh, we forgot the square root symbol, minus 64. So I have this 
does 8 equal the square root of this? So I have the square root of 64, because 128 minus 64 is 64. Uh, and 8 is equal to the square root of 64. That is true. Uh, if I plugged in negative 8, so now all of these are going to be negative, negative. Uh, this one is going to be negative, right? Is negative 8 equal to the square root of 64? That is not true. That is false. Uh, the square root of 64 is 8. So the only answer that works here is positive 8. Okay, and you could check this with the uh, graphing calculator. All right. Question number 20, which represents an exponential relationship. You could take these and graph it. Um, they always give you graph paper on the regions. Um, or you could kind of take a look and see that this is going up by 1. There's plus 1, plus 1 consistently, so this is going to be linear. Um, over here for the second one, these are actually perfect squares. 1 times 1 is 1, 2 times 2 is 4, 3 times 3 is 9, so on and so forth. So this is going to be a quadratic. Uh, it's going to look something like a bowl, uh, something like that. And uh, the last one on this end is, this is, the pattern is going to be to the third power. Uh, 1 to the third power is 1, 2 to the third power is 8, 3 to the third power is equal to 27, 4 to the third power is equal to 64. So this is actually a cubic. The second one is a quadratic. That's quadratic. It's asking you which one is exponential. Um, so I see that this one has to be, right? This is going, this is getting divided by 2, getting divided by 2, getting divided by 2, so on and so forth. So this one, if I were to go ahead and try to figure out what uh, the equation is, at 0, it's going to be 16. Why? Because if I divide by 2 here, right, this is dividing by 2. Uh, I can make, come on, Ms. Regis, you could write. Um, 16 divided by 2 is going to give me 8. So 1 half is going to be my, the, the rate at which I'm uh, increasing or decreasing by. And then it's, um, the starting number is going to be 16. Uh, to the x power, so y equals, if I were to graph this right here, I should be able to see that my table is going to look like this. So which one is exponential? Choice number one is going to be exponential rope. It happens to be exponential decay. Okay. Um, sketch of blah, blah, blah is equal to blah, blah, blah. Okay. So a couple of things that you do need to know here. So if it goes through like this, that means that this is a factor. So uh, we kind of did a question like this before, right? So that means that here, x is equal to a, okay? If I were to go backwards, because if you look at these answer choices, they are all factors, right? We're looking to see what it looks like in the bubble. So you switch the sign of a, x minus a, okay? So I know that what my answer choice is going to have an x minus a in it, so automatically this is out and this is out. It has to be either 1 or 4. Um, so I'm going to continue at my pattern right here. So this is minus b. So I'm going to go ahead and switch that sign. So that's going to be x plus b. So I know, hey, both of them have an x plus b in it. Okay. Uh, this one over here, so this goes through, right? Just like the first one does. This one over here, it's kind of like reverse, reverse. There's a double root here. Uh, that's, that means that this one's going to be raised to the second power. So this is minus c. The opposite of minus c is x plus c. So the x plus c1 is going to be raised to the second power. This is only raised to the first power, which means that it would happen to go through, but it doesn't. It's like reverse, reverse. So there's going to be a double root there. So the correct answer is option choice number four. Okay. Question 22. We're getting there. Question 22. So blah, 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 blah. Uh, if we take a look at this right here, it says uh, x is the number of hours after midnight there is a big hint. So it's asking you, according to this model, so they're giving us a model here, um, what is the nearest degree at 7 p.m., okay? So if you look and see how many hours is 7 p.m. after uh, midnight. So 7 p.m. is 19 hours after midnight, okay? So like, after midnight, 1 a.m. is 1 hour, 2 a.m. is 2 hours, so on and so forth. And you'll see that uh, 7 p.m. is going to be 19 hours after. So we have to take 19 and we have to plug it in for our value, uh, which is right 
over here. Uh, we're going to have to plug in 19 there. So we're trying to find T of 19. So you do 8 sine of 0.3 times 19 plus 74. Oh, minus 3 uh, plus 74. And then hit enter in your calculator and see what that gives you. And that is going to give you about 77. This is going to be about seven, 77 degrees to the nearest Fahrenheit. Okay, so option number three. Question 23. So I showed you how to do this into the calculator. So I'm just going to go ahead and continue doing that. Let me plug it in. All right. Turns out I don't have the operating system uh, for getting the the program, but it's apps is the button that you have to hit. So it's going to be apps. I'm just going to do this just uh, handwriting form. So apps, and then the one that you're going to pick after that is polysimult, simult2, uh, and you're going to choose option number two, which is simultaneous equations, and you're going to put in these numbers, right? So it's going to be one, one, minus one, six, two, negative three, positive two, negative 19, negative one, four, negative one, and 17. And then you're going to do next and see that the variables that they have, uh, that you're gonna get that X is equal to negative one. You're gonna get that Y is going to be equal to three and you're going to get z is equal to negative 4. Um, and so it's saying which number is not the value. So negative 1 is there, 3 is there, negative 4 is there. The one that is not anything is 2. Okay. All right. Last question for the multiple choice. So Cameron puts $400 into a savings account that earns 6% annually. Uh, the amount blah, 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 blah. Okay, so it's asking you which can, so this is earn 6% annually, um, and it's asking you to convert it into weekly. So I want you to remember that there in one year, there are 52 weeks, okay? One year, 52 weeks. Uh, we did not do this a lot, so if you get this question wrong, no big deal. Um, but what you have to do is you have to plug it into this formula. So this the formula is going to be a equals p uh and then it's parentheses one plus or minus so since this account is growing uh da, 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 weekly growth rate we're going to use plus uh and then this is the r and it's going to be to the t power okay uh so what we have to do is she is starting with $400. So that's our principal. That's our growing amount. So all of them say 400. So there's nothing to kind of get rid of. Um, and then it says 1.06 is going to be our rate, right? Right here, this number right here. So we're going to take that number and it's 1.06. And we are splitting this one year into 52 weeks. So we're going to raise it to the 1 over 52 power uh, because one year, 52 weeks. Whatever number right here goes on the bottom, in this case, it's 52. That's also going to go here. It's going to be 52t um, because they have to match. So if you're dividing 52 here, you have to multiply 52 there because uh, we're converting. Um, and so if you were to take this and plug it into the calculator, just this part right here, plug it into the calculator and hit enter, you're going to get 1.00112, uh, and it's going to be raised to the 52 over t power. So that's how I know that it's not 1 or 2, um, so it has to be 3 or 4. 1.06 to the 1 over 52 power, you hit enter, it's going to give you 1.00112118484, okay, which is the correct answer for that. All right, great job. Part 1 is done. I'm going to go ahead to part two, okay? I'm going to go ahead and pause this video and start another one.